The Islamic movement in Nigeria, IMN, is in the news again. And they are still clamoring for the same thing, the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim el Zaki, who has been incarcerated since 2015. This time, though, they're warning that their leader could die in custody if urgent steps are not taken, while accusing the federal government of frustrating efforts to give el Zaki medical attention. Still with me in the studio is political analyst Chuka Ihono. Thank you very much. Did I get that? Yes, you got it absolutely right. <laughs> second time. All right. So for the second time, sorry. Let's let's look at this. This is not okay. the first time they are saying that their leader is sick. They yeah. gave them an opportunity, and we know what happened with right. that. Do you think people will take them seriously this time? Um, the thing is, I think when you are in captivity, there's always this thing about health. People fall sick as soon as they get, go into captivity. Very strong Is it not men. a Nigerian thing? Yes, very strong men fall ill as soon as they get into, uh, into you know. But truth be told, though, um, the Nigerian prison conditions are not very good. So it is possible that they're not, like, totally lying. But everybody, I mean, you know, you remember when um, um, the PDP um, uh, secretary, um, uh, I can't quite remember his name now, the Igbo man who, um, um, yeah, yeah, um, um, who came with a wheelchair and his neck, uh, he had, had, he Oli, uh, had he broken his neck? Was he ill from something? Was it a heart problem? You know, these things happen and so nobody really, I, I don't take any of it seriously, you know. So if you ask me, oh, is Zach Zaki ill? I'll probably say, probably not. But we, we, do you have um, an inside information, maybe? Because these are people <laughs> that claim that they, you know, they have inside information. They had, they had a lot of information when he was taken to India for treatment. Um, and when he got there, um, he had his own terms of how he wanted to be treated. And, of course, the government feared that he might run away and so had their own terms for how he'd be treated. Now, I'm not on any side of the government or whatever, but let's face it, though. If government is holding you and the government says, you can go for treatment so long as it's like this, like this, like this. If the treatment can be carried out within the confines of what government says are the conditions, then really, let's, be fr let's, let's face it, there's no, you, you just have to go through treatment like that, unless the government way of doing it actually stops you from being treated. There's something it will do to your treatment that you will not be well or you might even die while being treated. So, you, well, this, this case is peculiar in, mm. in, in the sense that since 2015, this man has been granted <laughs> bail. Yes. But the federal government, or should I say the Kaduna state government, yeah. is holding on to him. Yes. The, latest we, the latest we had is that the federal government has shifted the responsibility to the Kaduna state government. Yes. And yes. the Kaduna state government is saying that they are not going to yes. drop the charges against yeah, right. Els exactly. That's right. So yes. what, He's continued incarceration. Doesn't that bother you? Yes, it bothers me because um, any government that has to have, quote unquote, enemies uh, is a government that isn't working. Um, and it's also a government that's undemocratic, uh, it's uncivilized, um, and um, therefore inconsiderate. Um, and I can use all this in this matter. Um, these things can be handled quickly and succinctly. There's no need to drag people for 45 days when you can deal with them in two days. There's absolutely no need. All this zagzaki for ages, we keep hearing about him and no, no progress. You go to India, you come back. Now they say the man is dying. And uh, if you don't let him out, um, he will die. Um, I don't think the government should be involved in this kind of thing. Uh, there seemed to be an, um, a reboot of the protests. For right. a while, right. there was the calm. Yes. It was relatively low, but now it seems they're back. Uh, yes. The other day, there was a press release that about five of them uh, were injured. Uh, do you think maybe this renewed um, protest is because of the bail granted Showare and Dasuki, who, has, um, who had been incarcerated yes. as well? Yes, I think so. Um, I was just going to say that uh, I didn't realize you were, you were about to talk about that. But yes, I think so. The moment you see another case making progress, you get worried about yours. And that's basically what's happening, uh, especially as his is older than theirs anyway. And um, I, I agreed it's a lot more serious. But um, 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 when you see other people coming out, you start to wonder, how about my own? 
you know, my man who's in there with his wife. Um, and I think, yes, um, uh, I don't blame them for wanting to start all over again. They've taken a rest and they should get up. If they're serious anyway, they should be doing this. They, they don't seem scared of the police from, well, even before now. Yes. They've had that antecedent and now they're back. Do you fear an escalation and what can the police and the government, who is a lot of persons are saying art fault in, yeah. in this matter, right. do to ensure that we don't have a repeat of what took the life of a young core member last year? Last year. Um, I don't know. I, 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 the, the game... The game strategy of this government, I, I, I have not been able to like, work, it, work, work it out, what they're doing, what their aims are uh, with regard to all these people they lock up and not lock up. There's just something so reminiscent of the military days. You see, it's not, we're not just talking because we want to talk when we say Buhari is beginning to act like a military le leader. And that's an insult, by the way, to the military because it's like saying that military is by its own very being uh, uncivilized. It's not. Yes, military is not built for, um, for government. They're not built to rule. It doesn't mean they're a bunch of idiots either. Aha. But because they're not made to rule, they shouldn't be ruling. And this man is still behaving like a soldier. And that's the problem. I think what it is anyway is that we shouldn't be in a presidential system of government. We should be in a system where there, there, there isn't that absolute power of a president and then the houses of uh, rep and uh, the senate and all that. You know, perhaps we need a prime minister similar to the way the UK does it <laughs> so that we bring one, he's a, he's a, a, a first among equals. The dynamics of Nigeria and that of mm. the UK is quite different. Yes, I know. I'm stating this not because I found the answer, but I'm saying that I think we need a system that is like that. That means we should go and work on it. It's awesome. something to work on, yes. We've got to get rid of the presidential system. All right, I, I, um, I, we have um, a video of the IMS, um, IMN, uh, the Shiites. Let's take a look at that and we'll continue the conversation here. After the 2015 Zaria massacre, the Judicial Commission of Inquiry, JCI, instituted by the Kaduna State Government, observed the involvement of the military which was not in line with their rules of engagement for any known international best practice. And therefore, the commission had recommended that the trial of all officers who participated in the massacre. Yet, it is our leader who is being persecuted by the culprits. It is pertinent to categorically inform the general public that the Kaduna state government does not possess powers to order the military to perpetrate the unjust massacre. The involvement of the military officers in the attack. That's just a little bit from the press uh, release okay. the other day. What, okay. what, what do you, how do you react to that? Um, again, well, uh, there are lots of allegations. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still say that there's a system that is not working and that's why we are not moving on that matter. Um, there's the law, and we really need to roll out the law here properly without being um, sec sectionalist or whatever about it, government or the, IMM, the Islamic movement. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I just want a civilized approach to this matter that won't take more than I don't know. I mean, again, legal people will probably argue with me and say, no, 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 you can't time this thing. It could take forever. But I think this thing can be done very quickly, much more quickly than this. So we stop all this um, uh, about a man dying or press releases and so on. There's, there's this uh, part of the statement uh, mm. issued by the by man this. we just watched yes. earlier. And I'll, I'll just uh, preview indulgence to read a bit of it. He yes. said, we would like to let El Rufai and his master know that the day of reckoning is very near indeed. Yes. Justice will be served and no amount of blackmail or misuse of state power could avert uh, this whirlwind of justice from mm. catching up with them all, end of quote. Yes. Some say this is a threat, others said, uh, and that should be taken seriously, others said, discountenance it. What do you say? Yeah, it's a veiled, it's a veiled threat. Um, and 
it's legally, I don't think you can act on it. It's not a threat, yes, because he has not said anything. In fact, he has, he's, simply, he's simply telling you what it is that is an, that, uh, well, like an eye for an eye. He's basically saying that what you do wrong will catch up with you. And that's not a threat, really. Once again, it looks like we're going to fall into that trap again of somebody who says revolution now, and you say he wants to throw you out of Asul Rock by force when you are elected. Of course not. It's just, this, this is semantics. And if we're going to play semantics, you, um, then even what happened with Showery, Showery wins hands down. So all they've done to him could bring him millions of dollars in, uh, in damages and things. What is happening here is that they, this chap is telling you that justice will catch up with you. He has not said, and we will ensure that you will not go scot-free. That's when it's a threat. Uh, as a final thought, what is the way forward in this particular matter? Because it's like we're just at a standstill, neither moving forward, neither moving back. We're just circling the same place. I think whenever they want to release him is when they will. That's what this is about. And so I don't know what the agenda is, how much longer he's got to stay, how long did Dasuki stay. We didn't know whether he was going to be released. And all of a sudden, there he is out. Um, show worry. Well, you saw what happened when they tried to release him once and they rushed to the courthouse and rushed on him and got him back in. You know, this is this very animalistic behavior, really. So we don't know how long this is going to take. Um, I, I pray, though, that it's over soon so that we can make some meaningful progress in this country. The longer they keep him, the more they strengthen the resolve of every other movement that may have dangerous, um, violent, um, uh, uh, yes, on this country, which we don't need right now. I must say thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. And of course, thank you for staying with us. We're not done yet, though. We'll just take a quick break to bring you our plus reports. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. The federal government has reiterated its commitment to transitioning to e-governance. The secretary to the government of the federation, Boss Musafa, while receiving the executive secretary of the Galaxy Backbone Limited, said the agency is key to the government achieving its plan. Musafa said the federal government will take advantage of the services the Galaxy Backbone can provide, which includes provision of network services for government agencies and parasatels, and storing sensitive government data. Before the establishment of the Galaxy, the MBAs uh, were operating in silos, and uh, most of their data are hosted outside, and that is uh, truly, actually, uh, security-wise, uh, uh, very, very wrong. And so the government of the day decided that uh, they need to have something internal, and that is what culminated into the formation of the Galaxy platform. So it is going to provide network services and also network platforms as well as the necessary hardware and storage of uh, the, the, the data or the government data that is very important okay, and will be host within the country and then will be also protected. So at the expiration of this uh, as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, uh, we will have as a nation transited to e governance and the Galaxy Platform will play a major role in the progression of the platform for the attainment of our transition to e governance. Basically, what that means is that we will remove. My take tonight, the Supreme Court has ruled no point crying over spilt milk. The question on my mind though is, what next? The people of Imo State might not have had the best of luck when it comes to who governs them in modern history, but it, was, it wasn't always so. Aside the groundworks laid by Dr. Michael Opara, the then Premier of Eastern Nigeria, the state got really lucky once in the 1980s when civil rights lawyer Sam Mbakwe became governor one of his legacies still being talked about today is the quality of the roads he built that continues to serve the people well. 
He was nicknamed the whipping governor for crying while trying to convince the federal government to pay more attention to his state. His commitment was not in doubt. It was so obvious for all to see until his work was cut short by the Muhammad de Buhari's military coup of December 31st, 1983. A name that has been given the opportunity to make history once again is Hope Uzadema, the fresh governor of Imo State. The next four years will reveal if he will be remembered like Sam Mbakwe or become among the list of names of those easily covered with dust and scarcely remembered. Only time will tell. But of course, I wish him the very best. Thank you for your time on the program tonight. Do please share your comments via social media handle at Plus TV Africa. I am on Twitter at Felicity underscore E. Until next time, please be well.